Hi, we're at Elmley on the Isle of Sheppey in Kent again. I was here last year and I made a, a YouTube film on it. I'm back, it's the middle of March and it's a wonderful time to be on this reserve. You can photograph out the car window and some really good opportunities. Opposite to me at the moment, I have a snipe, a common snipe, and I've been sitting with it for about 45 minutes. And it's got its back to me most of the time and it's not really showing that well. If it walks to the right, I get a better picture. If it goes to the left, well, I'll probably lose it completely. And it's a, a common dilemma, this, for wildlife photographers. Do I stay or do I go? Is there something better to photograph up there? You never know. If I have an overall policy on this, he who stays the longest gets the picture. At the same time, you've got to consider how many pictures have I already got of Snipe and how much video footage have I already got. How badly do I want it? The snipe did eventually oblige and move off to the right just slightly to avoid most of the grasses. Notice the catch light in the eye, how important it is when you're taking stills pictures that you have that highlight and you have to wait until the bird moved its head slightly. Doesn't matter quite so much with video. This is the sort of environment you're photographing in out of the car window, water on both sides of the road, all of the stills pictures are taken with the OM-1 camera with the 150 to 400 mm lens. The dirt track is almost two miles long as you drive across this marshland, and one of only a few places in the UK where this sort of photography out of the car window is possible. Lots of wading species. The oyster catcher. Now when I'm shooting video, I'm normally shooting at 60 frames per second, so that I can slow it down just a touch. Sometimes only 20-30% do I slow it down, otherwise birds just look too jerky. And sometimes I slow it down even more when I really want to see the behaviour. It fascinates me to watch birds in slow motion. This is only slightly slow, but it does allow you to see what the bird is doing and the amount of effort they have to put in to try to extract a grub or worm. And it seems that grub was pretty tiny for a lot of effort. There were two birds here and I was hoping they would start to pipe or call. And at this time of year they'll be doing that a lot. And they'll be mating, they've probably got a nest or a nest site already selected. As ever these days I have the dilemma, do I carry on shooting video or shall I take a few stills pictures? Well I swapped to stills, I took a few and then the one bird flew off and the other started to pipe. It would look much better on video when it's calling like this. Red shanks also very common as you go across the marsh. The sentinel of the marsh they call them because they're very noisy birds and if a crow or a buzzard flies overhead that's the bird that's going to be calling at them. Notice this bird here is pecking at these black spots on the water. Now at the time I'm filming this I'm concentrating on keeping the bird sharp and in the frame and I wasn't really paying attention to what he was pecking at. But those black dots on the water seem to be disappearing. So I've slowed the footage down and I'm zooming in. See if we can make out what it is it's eating. No, you can see those sort of black dots disappearing, but I can't make out what they are. Undecided. So here's a red shank pulling up an earthworm at normal speed. And we can see what it's got. But slow it down it just looks so much more interesting so this is about five times slow it's shot in 4k so i can shoot at 120 frames per second and then we're playing this back at 25 frames per second it's a big worm and it looks very clean but nevertheless this red shank is very fussy it gives it a good wash I guess it's much easier to swallow if it hasn't got earth attached to it.
went down easily. Most of the video is taken with the Lumix GH6 using the same lens. I tend to like birds with reflections in the water, but not all photographers do. Never quite understood it. I'm much happier if I've got a reflection. My ISO for a picture like this with the OM-1 will be 1600, that's my default setting, lens wide open. Only once did I get a chance to photograph a black-tailed godwit, and at first I didn't think I was going to be able to get pictures because it was too far down this bank. It walked in, walked along the bank, kept low, and I had to wait maybe 5-10 minutes before it changed its mind and came up a little bit higher. Shutter speed with birds like this doesn't really matter too much. The bird's not moving. It's 500th of a second, 5,000th of a second. You can't really tell a difference. Kestrel in flight, that would be different. If I was taking stills pictures, then I'd want 2,500th of a second and upwards. But I only did video on this bird. It's a female. You can see the barring on the tail. Those bars show up whether you're looking underneath the bird or whether you're looking from the top. So this is slowed down to about half speed. Although this visit to Elmley was on a Saturday and it was a nice sunny day, it wasn't too crowded. There were plenty of people there and quite a few photographers, but the track is long enough that there's space enough for everybody. I've been putting quite a bit of time into photographing the lapwings doing their aerial display. I don't think I've done a very good job. They're very fast flying. When you're shooting out of the car window, you're sort of restricted because of the, the window frame and also your body's facing the wrong way. Your legs are forward, but you have to twist sidewards to look out the window. And I've always found it very difficult to follow a fast flying bird like that. I want to be out of the car, sitting on a stool with my back pressed up against the car. The birds will take no notice of me, but you're not allowed to get out of the vehicle here. But if I could do that, I think I'd stand a chance of being able to follow them. Well, a lot easier than I'm managing so far anyway. This is a male lapwing. The crest on the head is longer than the female and the face has got more darker markings on it. This is my favourite British bird. This is a female, shorter crest, although that is easier to see when you've got the two birds side by side, but the face is also just not quite as dark. I've got so many pictures of lapwings I wasn't that excited about photographing them until this one started to bathe. That becomes more interesting. Now, something that doesn't affect you when you're taking stills pictures, but it does with video, switch off your mobile phone. Not that it really matters, because I normally add the soundtrack on afterwards in post-production. The lapwing is going to face into the wind, and when it finishes bathing, it will dry its wings. Look how big those wings are. They're huge. Here, again, shutter speed is important, so 2,500th good starting point. Now I'll show you some of the pictures I took of the aerial display, which I found very difficult to do. The OM-1 was amazing in its ability to keep the bird in focus, the problem was the photographer. He couldn't keep the bird in the frame. They twist and turn so rapidly. It's okay when they're small in the frame, but as they come closer, that's when you start to lose them. The fact there's no flicker in the viewfinder, you've got continuous viewing, that makes a big difference. That helps a lot. But really, I needed to be outside of the car, behind a tripod, facing the birds. I'd have stood far more chance then. When I was young, this was the sound of spring. Every farm had lapwings breeding, two or three in a field sometimes. I really wanted two birds chasing each other. It's usually two males doing this aerial display, chasing around and fighting. I wish I'd got this sort of camera equipment years ago when this bird was common 
and I'd have stood a lot of chance. I could be working close to home then. This is the only shot that's been cropped. The others are all full frame. And thanks for watching.